Hello everybody, welcome to the Dally Society. Today we're going to review a very practical garment that I have made a lot of. So we'll get back to you soon with the Green Line Studio Linden Sweatshirt. So as you can see today, it's casual Kristen. I have got one of my most wearable garments. I have made up to maybe nine of these over the last four years. It's a very easy, very practical garment that I know that you'll get a lot of wear out of through all seasons. It can be made with a confidence sale within probably half an hour from start to finish. If you're a beginner, it's probably one of the best patterns to start with. And even though it's stretch, don't be put off by that because it's actually a very, very um, quick, handy, practical sew that a very um, newbie, a newbie sewers could take on quite easily. You just have to have a little bit of knowledge and I'm gonna take you through a sewing tutorial a little bit later on after this. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the line drawings. Firstly, um, the Grain Line Studio sweatshirt you can make with a long sleeve or a short sleeve. Um, it can be made with ribbing around the neck, either in a ribbing fabric, a stretch fabric, or the actual same fabric that you're making your garment with. It calls for a 20% stretch fabric. So that can be either something like a cotton jersey for a lightweight um, garment, a sweatshirt fleece fabric it can be made out of, a French terry. Um, so there's a, quite, a, quite a lot of fabrics that you can find that you'll make, be able to make it out of. And, um, and also the, the good thing about it is wearing through all seasons, I've found that it's a it's probably one of my most worn makes that I've ever made. So as you can see today, this one I've made is in a French terry. So it's a lightweight. It is just like that little loopy finish on the inside. So it's not actually a thick fleece fabric. It's a lightweight jersey. Um, I'll just give you a quick little look. Um, I have done this in the Yoga Lady print from Spotlight, the fabric. And I've used the same fabric to do the neckline band, the sleeve band, and the band around the bottom. So you can actually do it with the same fabric. It works really well as long as it's got the right amount of stretch. I have um, become unstuck before with this pattern by using a fabric that wasn't quite stretchy enough. And you'll find that if you're using that same fabric around the bottom, the band could be a little bit too tight. So be careful that you're using the right amount of stretch in your linden sweatshirt. A few of mine I've made, I'll give you a little look. Firstly, the pineapple sweatshirt. This is made out of a really thick fleece. This is about four years old. I've washed and worn beautifully. This sort of fabric's fantastic for winter because it's really warm. And I've made it with the ribbing, the contrast color ribbing with the neckband and the bottom as well and around the sleeve. And that just gives you that little bit of extra stretch when you're popping it on. I've made a, another fun print as well. It's in the same kind of fleece fabric. Okay, and also another option you can do is by making the raglan sleeve. Raglan sleeves are actually really easy to do. It's one of the easiest things to make, so I'll show you how to do that later on. Um, you can see that you can use the raglan sleeve in like a plain color and the neckband in the same color, and then the front and back you can do the pattern. So you can really mix and match. You can do different color sleeves to the, to the main part of the body. Um, it really just depends on how creative you want to get. Uh, the, this one I made in a scuba. It actually works fine. It's um, not as stretchy as your other fleeces and jerseys, but scuba's got quite a lot of stretch. It's more like that sort of polyester finish, so it's not warm at all, but it's comfortable to wear for that lightweight little sort of autumn, spring weather that you might want to do the layering with, but you don't want that thick, warm uh, sweatshirt. So that's in a scuba. That one looks great with jeans and boots as well. So I'm going to take you through a sew along in a moment. I actually found some fabric in spotlight yesterday I fell in love with. It's a cotton jersey. So I'm going to make a short sleeve. Well, actually, like it's like a, uh, an elbow length sleeve in a t-shirt style. I'm not going to use the ribbing band around the bottom. I'm going to have it more of a cutoff tee. So it's got a really cute little fun bug print. And I just, I've already washed that too. So make sure that you remember to wash, pre-wash all your fabric because you don't want to make the garment up and have it shrink on you after all your hard work. So always pre-wash, even tumble dry a little bit just to, to shrink it even more before you cut the fabric out. So this one I'm going to do with a contrasting mustard rib. So you can see like the stretch, they've got a huge amount of stretch. 
And I'll show you how to attach the band to the neck too without getting that saggy look. You want it to be quite taut, but that's part of the measuring process. You really need to look at your measurements. The reason I like the Linden sweatshirt, I actually found that when I was looking for a wind cheater or a, just to wear a jumper to wear with, with jeans, there's usually only hoodies in store that I've looked and looked and only found hoodies. And I find that if you're wearing a coat, the, the hood can actually get in the way a little bit. So I love that simple round neckline, that just like the old fashioned style sweatshirts. They are really hard to find in a fun print. You might find them in a lot of cheaper uh, high street stores, but they won't have that fun, edgy kind of print that you're after. And the quality there, like as I say, this is four or five years old and there's no peeling at all on that fabric. So you're really going to get a good quality handmade garment if you do it yourself. Another thing to remember too, if you don't have a serger or overlocker, it's fine. When I first started uh, about five years ago, I didn't have an overlocker and I made about probably four or five of these with my zigzag setting on my machine or the stretch element, which is the triple stitch. I think the zigzags probably works a lot better. But I think this is a really fun, easy make and it's something practical. We all love dresses and dressing up. Um, dress is a, a gorgeous thing to make to have in your wardrobe as a little bit of a trophy. But really, sweatshirts, you, you are definitely going to get the wear out of these because, as I say, I warm one to death. So really, it's a great beginner garment to start sewing and, and to get your teeth into. So join in with me. I'll take you on a little sew along with my new T-shirt. Starting off with the Grainline Studio sweatshirt, we are doing View B. As you can see here, we are not putting the bottom band or the arm bands on. We're just doing the three-quarter sleeve and the ribbing neck. Make sure you always look through your pattern first. Read it. Make sure you've got your measurements right. I'm using the size 14 around the top half and the neck, but I'm grading out to a size 16 around the middle area because I like more of a boxy fit. So you can learn to do that yourself. When you start uh, playing with this pattern, you'll, you'll get to know what your right fit is. Always look at your pattern uh, layout for your width of fabric and your sizing. It shows you exactly how to place your pattern pieces. As you can see, my pattern pieces are really well worn and really been hacked into quite a lot. But you know what? It doesn't matter because I know how to make this and I've, I've used these uh, to death. So it's a fantastic pattern. You can also trace these off onto uh, tracing paper. That's another way to keep your pattern pieces good. Another thing too is with your pattern lines around the edges, it each has a size and you'll see they've got their individual little patterns. So the size 16 has got like a long stroke with two little dots. So it's a way of getting to know. Most, most of these have got sizes written on them anyway, but a lot of patterns don't have the sizes. So you have to get to know what the key is for each pattern piece. So starting off, we'll get cutting. We've pinned everything down. Make sure you've got your fabric in half and you've got your fold pieces on the folds where they should be and that your salvage edges are together. So the salvage edges are the edges that have been finished off. They're quite easily, um, you can easily see that what the salvage is because they've got a little bit of a edging finish. So always test your stretch, make sure the stretch is the right way around and also make sure that if you've got a pattern or a print that you don't sew the pattern upside down because I have done that before and there's nothing more annoying than getting to the end and seeing that your pattern is all upside down. So let's begin. Don't forget too that you must remember to put your notches and a good way for, for doing raglan sleeves to remember that the back part of the raglan sleeve has two notches, the front part of the sleeve has one notch. So always cut your notches. I'm actually adding a little bit more length onto my top because I want to make sure that it's not too short and cropped. And a good way to do that, if you have got enough fabric, you can always cut it off later to cater to whatever length you like. But it's always good to start off with a little bit extra hem and then you've got more to play with. 
Make sure you have your correct needle. You've got either a jersey or a stretch ballpoint needle. It's very important and much kinder to your fabric. Don't forget your pin cushion and your slippers. Have all your pattern pieces ready to go. Front piece has got the one notch on each sleeve. Back piece has got two notches, so just so you don't forget. why it's so important to make sure that your notches are cut in the right spot and that they match up. It's a really sure proof way that um, you won't get yourself into trouble. And everything should be fitting more evenly. I'm showing you this on a regular sewing machine with a zigzag, but don't forget if you've got a serger, that's the best way to sew knits because you're going to do a nice clean edge or even a cover stitch. But this is today to show everyone that you don't need that to make a stretch garment. Zigzag works perfectly fine.
now you've got the basics of your top. If you're wanting to know what's the back and what's the front, don't forget your notches are still there. You can see that's the one notch, so that's the front. And now we're going to put the neckband on. I always put the pins at each quarter and then I match them up with the neck seam. So we've got the back is the one quarter and then Make sure it's nicely in half. Long ways. So you want to even up the two halves. So another pin in there. So then you've got the pins at each half and then you want to do each quarter. So the same thing, I even up. If you want to get really specific, you can measure, but I've always found this to be a fine way to, to get the neckband to sit nicely. So the first thing I do now is I look for the back and I'll then fold, make sure that you've got the two notches, which is the back. So I'll fold the back in half where the shoulders meet. And then I've got my exact back. So I'll put a little pin at the exact half of the back. Same thing with the front. You get the two side seams bit there, even them up, and you've got the front, very front half. So you can see I've done it each quarter, I've pinned the right amount, so you just need to measure up your halves and your quarters and place your pins accordingly around the neckline to meet up. That way you get a slight gather without being too bunched up on one side, not the other. So I always start from the back. Once you put a first few stitches in, you need to then gather, or sorry, you need to pull taut your uh, neck banding because the neck binding will be shorter than the actual length of the neck itself. So you need to pull as you sew and stretch out to be the exact length of your fabric underneath. That way you'll get the perfect amount of gather. After just finishing off my edges with my overlocker, if you have a serger or a cover stitch machine, you're very lucky because that will get your best finish uh, on a juicy knit top. You can either zigzag the hemline on or if you have a twin needle, you can do a twin needle which gives you the double line, which a lot of things are professionally finished off with that twin needle stitch line, but you don't need that. You can zigzag is perfectly fine. So well, let's get started.
final part, which is the hem, and I've pressed this, and believe me, pressing makes everything so much neater and easier in the long run. Um, and then you can just use pins as well to keep it in place, but you'll find once you've pressed it, you don't really even need the pins because you'll see that direct line there. So, last step. And there we have it, your completed top. Don't forget if you're doing the bottom of the band around the uh, the bottom of the jumper, if you're doing the ribbon band around the sleeves or the bottom, you will then use the same principle that you did for the neckline to do it into quarters. And that way you'll um, get a much neater finish. But I've just done a nice wide hem. Usually jerseys tend to curl up a lot, so I think the wider the hem and the stiffer the, the press, the better it will sit. Um, that's why sometimes it's good to do a double stitching hemline because it will keep it in place. But this has got a nice thick hem, so it shouldn't give me any trouble. And I'll show you some pics of this in a moment. I really hope that you will then go on to buy some fabric to start maybe sewing your own linden sweatshirt because I really think it's a valuable thing to, to learn. It can put people off at the start. Anything to do with stretch, that word stretch or overlocking, surging can bring you know fear into people's minds but it's really it's the best kind of garment to, to start with because there's not a lot of fitting issues. It's nice and comfortable and loose. There's plenty of ease in it so it's probably the best thing to start off with. Thanks for joining me again. I'm Kristen, Casual Kristen today, and we'll see you again next week. Don't forget to click and subscribe and like if that's what you like to see. Thanks for tuning in. I will join you next week for a new pattern review. Until then, keep up with the sewing. Bye for now.